centuries ago, cartographers used to draw creatures, monsters, and dragons on the map. They would write in Latin, hic sunt draconis. Translated in English, it meant, here be dragons. The dragons, the creatures, they represented the unknown. They represented territories where we didn't know what existed. They were signposts, warnings, disclaimers to explorers, adventures that only the bravest should venture, as we don't know if you're going to survive. Despite these warnings, despite the dragons, explorers like Christopher Columbus, like Francis Drake, like Magellan, they continued exploring the unknown. And they all had, despite their differences in motivations, two similarities, two attributes that they all shared, persistence and inner strength. Persistence is continuing, continuing to do something to try to do something even when it's difficult, even when people and forces say you shouldn't. Inner strength works in complementary with persistence in the fact that inner strength is all about moving forward and having that will to continue. One of my favorite quotes from a fictional wise man comes from Uncle Iroh and he says, in the darkest times, Hope is something that you give yourself. That's the meaning of inner strength. Thanks, Uncle Iro. Now, it turns out that persistence and inner strength are qualities that, even throughout history, the most successful figures have had. In the 1800s, Abraham Lincoln failed at his first business. He was bankrupt. He lost seven elections before he became the 16th president of the United States. More recently, before the iPad, before the iPhone, before the iPod, Steve Jobs failed at multiple projects, multiple products that were seen as failures, including Macintosh TV, the Power Cube, and the Apple III. Now, despite their failure, failures, Lincoln and Jobs didn't quit after their first failures. They went on. They persisted. They looked at their inner strength, and they knew that despite the people telling them, you failed. Despite all the people against them, they continued going on. Persistence and inner strength. Two decades ago, a boy and his family moved from Taiwan to the San Francisco Bay Area. Now, growing up during his childhood, the boy would spend his after-school hours with his family, with his parents at a warehouse, where his parents would be working the evening shift, packaging imported and exported goods, just to put food on the table. The boy grew up never having a video game console, never learning how to play Super Smash Brothers. And during winter nights, he would be bundled up with his siblings because they wouldn't be able to pay for his heat. Now his family always straddled the line between poverty and the lower middle class. They never took a vacation, but he never lost hope. He always wanted to become the better version, the best version of himself. In the fourth grade, he taught himself how to build a website and he built his first website on something that he thought was incredibly important. Pokemon. All the adults in his life told him, it's really cute, it's really great that you build a website. But none of them believed at the time that building websites could be a full-time career. And they told him to focus on your studies, on your schoolwork. That's never going to be your job. Three years later, when he was in the seventh grade, he formed his first business sold his first website to his first client. And years later, going into college and graduating college, he started two more businesses. And now, about two decades later, that boy from Taiwan is 
standing before you right now. I'm 27 years old. I own and co-founded Candeavor, a digital marketing and design agency here in the Silicon Valley. Two decades ago, I would have never imagined that I would be traveling the world, speaking to businesses, to nonprofits, to rotary clubs about attracting young professionals, about my story. But the truth is, none of this has been about my IQ. I'm not particularly smart. It was never about my SAT scores, never got a perfect score. It wasn't even about the college I went to. In the end, it's all about persistence. It's about using the cards that you're dealt with and making the most out of them. It's about, at the end of the day, even when you don't want to get out of bed, when you don't want to do something, to go there, to show up, to be there, to be present. And to remember that with all of your dreams, even when everyone tells you you can't achieve them, that you're a fool, that it's up to you to have the inner strength, to believe in yourself. Because no one in this world is going to protect your dreams like you will. Not your parents, not your best friend, not your closest friends. Your dreams are your own to protect, so protect them. Life is short and fleeting. There's always time to do something you're not happy with doing and to fail at something you're not happy to do. But there's also time for you to take the risk, follow one of your dreams, and even try. Because the worst thing that can happen is that you try and you fail at a dream, at something that makes you happy. Now, centuries ago, when those cartographers would draw those dragons, and those dragons would represent the unknown, the guardians of the unknown, we still had the brave explorers. We still had people going out there. Through persistence and inner strength, they explored the unknown. They slayed the unknown. They became dragon slayers. Now today, remember your dreams. Remember that people will always, there's always going to be someone who tries to smash your dreams, tries to tell you no. There's always going to be forces and obstacles that stand in your way. But through persistence, through inner strength, that's going to make the difference between whether or not you're a dreamer and whether or not you're a slayer of dragons. Persistence and inner strength. Thank you.